There is a passage of scripture which has always blessed me whenever I read it. It has shown me that God is intent in putting a special blessing upon his children. I've read this passage over and over again and it has each time made me to know that it is the intent, the express intent of God's mercifulness and God's loving kindness to bless each one of us. And today I've decided that while we are locked down, while we have this troublesome times, while we have these challenging times, I should appear before you as the pastor of the Seventh Adventist Church to pronounce a special blessing upon you. I know that I do not naturally carry the blessings of God with me. And in fact, what I will be pronouncing to you is coming from God himself. He has more interest in you than I have at this moment in time. And I want you to listen attentively as we deal with one of the special passages of the Bible in the Old Testament, which reflects the Lord's prayer in the New Testament. In fact, scholars have said that the passage in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, is the Old Testament's Lord's Prayer. You can actually find elements which are similar in the New Testament pronouncement of the Lord's Prayer in this prayer. Our scripture reading comes, therefore, from the book of Numbers chapter 6, from verse 22 to 27. In the New King James Version, this is how it reads. Verse 22, the Lord said to Moses, verse 23, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the children of Israel. Say to them, verse 24, the Lord bless and keep you. Verse 25, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Verse 26, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the, on the, on the Israelites and I will bless them. This passage of scripture has always been referred to as the priestly blessing, or most appropriately, the Aaronic blessing. And sometimes when we say this is the Aaronic blessing, or Moses, or sometimes when we say this is the Aaronic blessing, we give an impression that it is the priest, and in the modern language, it is the pastor who is responsible for the blessings of the children of Israel. In fact, it is the pastor who is the source of the blessings to the congregation of God. Now, this mystic and cultic understanding that seeks to bestow some magical creative powers to the pastor is false. It is false because as pastors and even as priests, we are not the source of blessings. In fact, if you read verse 27 from uh, the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 6, it says, They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. It is actually saying to us, it is not the pastor, nor the priest. It is not the man of God who is carrying blessings upon the children of God. They are just simply pronouncing what God has said to bless God's people. I want you to be blessed today. This... Uh, uh, it is false and misleading because we all know that priests and pastors are servants of God. They stand between God and his people like I'm doing today and are simply conduits through which God himself becomes the ultimate blesser of his congregation. We cannot ascribe some magical, strange powers to ourselves. But today, I want you, your family, your loved ones to know that I'm appearing before you today with the express intent of passing this blessing from God himself to you as the children of God. Ultimately, God himself becomes the blesser of his congregation. We cannot ascribe some magical powers to even the so-called men of God. They are not the source of God's blessings. God is ultimately the one who blesses us. I want to share with you in a moment as we speak about blessing, in fact, our mis misunderstanding of the source of blessings 
is sometimes only matched by our limited understanding of what a blessing is all about. I've argued with people who say, when you, have, you are driving a new car, God has blessed you. If you have a new article of clothing, God has blessed you. If you have money, God has blessed you. Uh, if you have uh, possessions, God has blessed you. If you have positions, God has blessed you. Some commentators on this chapter mention three things which in this poetic passage are considered a blessing. And those three things are favor, protection, and well-being. Now, if you look at those three things, you will discover that there is nothing tangible. You cannot quantify favor, protection, and well-being. These are things sometimes which money cannot buy. While it is true that the presence of material things in our lives may be an indication that we are blessed on account of our faithfulness in being his stewards, this is not always so. It does not indicate, it does not always indicate that God is blessing you when you have got positions and possessions. It is possible, for instance, to drive the latest model in terms of cars and still remain empty inside. It is possible to be rich and increased in goods and still remain empty inside. It's possible, it is possible to wine and dine with the platinum ilk of our society and still remain empty inside. It is possible to be educated, to have all the education in the world and still remain empty inside. To have both positions and possessions and still remain empty inside and yet, and, and still live a miserable life. All because your priorities are wrong. The Bible is very emphatic when it says, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these other things are going to be added unto you. I'm pursuing, in speaking to you today, the idea that we should stop thinking that the blessings which Moses uh, is being told by God to pass through to Aaron and his sons are not necessarily material blessings, although those are not expressly excluded. These are the blessings of seeking the kingdom of God, like the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 will say, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. So I want to talk to you about this special blessing which we need to pursue as the children of God, especially because you have seen in the last few weeks that the abundance of money and resources, the abundance of possessions may not save us from the calamities, the natural calamities, which we are going to experience in this world. The people who are sick and dying are not necessarily people who don't have money to take care of themselves. They are not uh, necessarily people who are poor and have nothing to, to, to protect themselves against this, this, uh, this pestilence. There are people like you and me who live from day to day who have got possessions, who have got positions, and we are now seeing that the greatest blessing is not to have things. You may have things, but you are still going to be inconvenienced in life. It is important for us to know that the greatest blessing is what God is offering us. So what, according to this passage, are we supposed to pursue as God's people as the ultimate form of a blessing above all others? The best blessing which we as a people especially in this troublesome times, must long for, pray for, agonize about day and night, night and day, is the presence of God in our lives. Because without him, we are nothing. We can have money. We can have an abundance of possessions. We can have all the labels of clothes we, we, we care to know about. We can have a roof of our head. We can have food upon our tables, but we need Jesus 
more than ever. When we have Jesus by our side, when we have the presence of the Lord in our lives, we can speak like David and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you have the presence of the Lord in your life, when God is present, he takes care of everything. He becomes the lily of the valley. Your life becomes beautiful. He becomes the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the whole world. Your sins are carried away um, and they are wiped off by the power of his blood. When you have Jesus by your side, he becomes the Lion of Judah. You are not fearful of anything. When you have God, when you have God's presence in your life, you will know that that is the whole package. He is all that you need. Because surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Paul says, when you have uh, the presence of God in your life, you will speak like Paul in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 38, where it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no death, no any other creature, including the pestilence of COVID-19, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the presence of the Lord, or when the presence of the Lord is in your life, your anchor will surely hold. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in our Savior's love. As we come to the end of this service, where we have understood that God wants to put a special blessing upon his people, I want you to receive a special blessing from me. And you now know that I do not have that blessing. God is your ultimate blesser. Whatever you need, whatever you are running short of, whatever you are longing for, whatever anxiety you are suffering now, may it be that no weapon formed against you by the devil shall prosper. I pray that those of you who are sick may be well, that those of you who do not have jobs may find jobs, those of you who are laid off for a while because of COVID-19 may find that your jobs are still safe and secure. I pray that those of you who are worried about your loved ones uh, may know that God is still in control in this trouble sometimes. I want you to know that weeping may last for a night, but joy will come in the morning. There is a special blessing which God wants to put to bestow upon each one of us. God wants to give himself to you. You need to receive him. And when you receive him, the presence of God in your life is the highest ultimate blessing which you need to have. Because in the presence of God, the devil trembles when he approaches you. And I want to pronounce that beautiful rendition of the ironic prayer upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen.